Rokoko sent me their new and improved motion capture suit to review. Let's put it on and let's see what it's made of. So in the package that Rokoko sent me, we've got a Rokoko tote bag, a matte black hanger for the suit, a garment bag with a bunch of zippers for the suit and its accessories. Then we got the special box. Uh, so in this box, first off, we have the suit, which looks gorgeous by the way. They've gone with an orange and black theme for the suit, which I really like. The previous version was fully black, but the wires were orange. And in this new suit, they kind of implemented that theme of the orange wires into the suit logo and the zippers as well. And I think it just goes really well together. The sleeves of the suit come with this little USB, which allows you to connect the gloves to the suit if you purchase them. These also help power the gloves now. In the previous version, you had to get a separate power supply, but now you don't have to. You can just connect the gloves and they'll be powered by the battery you have for the suit. So no need for a second power supply. At the back of the suit, right above your butt, there's a gadget used to connect to the Rococo Studio, which you also use to connect the suit to your Wi-Fi. A little higher up behind the neck, there's a zipper you can open and take out the headband that tracks your head movement. And lastly in this box, we got some Rococo stickers, some cool cards with information on them, and a signed thank you card from the Rococo team. Alright, now that we got that covered, let's put on the suit and talk about what's new. So just like the previous suit, the material is made to be stretchy, breathable, but also, according to Rococo, the Smart Suit Pro 2, this new one, is actually more robust than the previous version. So you don't have to worry about damaging the sensors or the suit when recording your motion capture. And so as I put this thing on and before we get into the recording, let's talk about some details. The price of the suit is $27.50, but they also have some bundle options for the gloves and the face capture as well. If you make a purchase, you'll have a 30-day trial period. Now this is after the suit is delivered, so you have a chance to try it out, see if it's for you. And if you realize that the suit isn't actually for you, you can just get a refund, which I think is a pretty cool policy, especially when dealing with a higher ticket item like this. In terms of new features with the second version of the suit, there's supposed to be an increase in performance and the accuracy of the data, which also means less interference. And last, but definitely not least, this new version supports elevation tracking, which means you can jump and climb onto things and it'll track your position in space. We'll test this feature out soon, but all I have is a metal step, so hopefully it won't cause any interference with the data. We'll see how it goes. All right, so this is the step before me actually putting on the suit. Uh, I was going to connect the suit to the Rokoko Studio app, and I was trying to use the USB-C to USB cable that they gave me for connecting the suit, but unfortunately, it was not working. I tried getting it to work, and the suit would just not connect to my app. So I actually went and grabbed another USB to USB-C converter that I had and that one worked perfectly. I just connected it with a different wire and there was no issues. So I guess it was just a faulty wire that I got, which is totally fine. But once your suit is connected, you'll probably be asked to update your smart suit, which you can go ahead and press update and you can press confirm and confirm update. After a little while, it'll finish installing. And once it's done installing, you can go ahead and press got it. There you go. Suit is up to date, firmware is up to date. And now you can head over to the Wi-Fi section and put in your Wi-Fi information. And once you got everything in, press apply settings and voila, the smart suit too is now connected to Wi-Fi. So you can actually go ahead and disconnect the suit now if you'd like. And now you can wear the suit. So let's go ahead and create a new project and I'm gonna name this Rococo2 Video 1, create project. Now we're gonna create our scene. So let's name this scene one. I know I'm not very creative. And there we go, we have our scene. So as you can see, that's a perfect resemblance of my posture right now. <laughs> well, the reason it's messed up is because, let's make a character and let's call it Brian. And let's save this character as purple. And for height, I'm a short king, 173 centimeters. Save after, there we go. And what we need to do now is actually drag the smart suit. So this is what we're recording right now. Uh, we wanna drag that into Brian. 
So the two become one. There we go. So again, still very messed up, as you can see, but we have to go ahead and calibrate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and stand back, my feet under my hips, head straight, knee straight, everything. And now, as you can see, there's the live representation of my character. Pretty cool. Uh, there's some sliding happening. But it's not major, but I do have a TV to my right, computer right there, and another set of computers right there, and a bunch of metal laying around in the background here. But considering that's actually not bad at all, and you can clean up a lot of the sliding if it happens. So right now it doesn't. It was happening for a second, but it's not happening anymore. Uh, maybe because I was like super close to this couch. Maybe it was like tripping out a little bit. Yeah. But so far so good. So let's go ahead and try and record something. Oh, hey Sam, what are you doing on my screen here? Let's press the X. We don't need you right now. So some of the options we have up here are follow with camera. So if we click that and we start walking around, you can see that the camera starts following our character instead of just being stationary. I'm gonna uncheck that. And I'm gonna go to filters over here and we have a couple of options, but down here we have treadmill. And what treble, treadmill means is that it doesn't matter where you move in the space, you see the character feels like they're on the treadmill. So if I start running, let's start running forward, the character starts running, but they run in the treadmill. So if you want to make a, let's say a game cycle, a game running animation cycle, this would probably be the way to do it. You just have the person run, and then the recording would just be stationary to be in the same spot. So I should mention that this is Rococo Studio Beta, and emphasis on beta. This is still in the works, it's not fully out yet, so if you're planning on doing any sort of production work, I recommend using the Rococo Studio Legacy and not this newer version. The downside of the Legacy is that it doesn't have some of the newer features like elevation tracking. We're actually gonna test that right now. But I just wanna say, if you're working on a production and you don't wanna run into any sort of glitches, use the Legacy version and not the beta version. So let's go ahead and test out elevation tracking. So here, again, in the filters, I can turn that on and I can say that my steps are going to be Let's say yeah, 20, 20 centimeters, sure. Let's say my steps are gonna be 20 centimeters. So that's how high the stool I'm gonna use is gonna be. So here I have a stool right here. And yeah, elevation is on. So let's, let's try this. Uh, this is a metal stool, so I don't know how this is gonna perform, but let's go ahead and take a step. Look at that. That's pretty cool. Almost, actually, I don't, I don't see any interference at all. So this is a metal stool zero interference, I can put my feet down, get a foot up, both feet, I can climb on top of this other, I probably shouldn't, but that's pretty cool. That was actually way better than I thought it was gonna be. And uh, if you were wondering what these are, these are for you to connect into the gloves, and I would connect it to the gloves if I had them. So Rococo, hit a brother up, I wouldn't mind some gloves either, uh, but for now I'm just kind of putting them back into the suit. Uh, okay, so now we got the basics covered and what we're gonna do now is actually record something So let's go ahead and record something and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna record talk about it a little bit and Then in the next video, I'm actually going to be cleaning up that recording and then implementing it into blender Into an animation character. So but that's for the next video. So for this video I'll just show you how to record and how to export etc etc. But the cleaning is gonna be in the next video All right, so before I start recording uh, I'm gonna go ahead and actually click on Brian and I'm gonna retarget or recalibrate one more time. It's good to do this every like five to 10 minutes just because things could kind of go wonky over time without you realizing, drifting a little bit. So there we go, cool. All right, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and uh, turn elevation tracking off because we're not gonna be climbing on anything. And I'm gonna go ahead and name this Jumping Jacks 1. And then I'll go ahead and press record. And let me move this out of the way. 
we're gonna go ahead and do some jumping jacks. There we go. Sorry, I had to. Okay, let's stop the recording. So now we have our recording here and we can go ahead and press play. Here we can give some feedback on how the quality was. We'll say it was okay. And there we go, I'm just scrolling out here. And you can see, if you pay attention to the green and the blue here, so the, the blue is for your right foot, the green is for your left foot, and that's when your foot is connecting. That's when that circle is full. So you can actually go ahead and edit that in here, which again, we'll do in the next video. Here's us moving the stool and then doing a jumping jack. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually end it right here because let's say I don't want the rest of this animation. And so what I can do is actually go up here and click and drag this all the way back until this point. And you know what? Let's say that I want to start recording from this point. So what I can do is actually come down here with the purple is and drag this animation all the way there and move it until where the zero marker is. So now our animation actually starts here. And then we want it to actually end here now. So I'm gonna go ahead again and drag this all the way back here. And now when we press play, that's our animation, that's our jumping jack. And we haven't done any cleaning here. We can go throughout the entire animation and do cleaning again, uh, but that's for the next video. But what, if we want to export our animation after we cleaned it, we can go up here to export, I can go ahead and choose FBX, which is the one you usually pick. Uh, you can say include body skeleton. If you're working with uh, a game engine, you'll likely need to check body mesh. But if you're importing this into Blender or Maya, you don't need body mesh. You just need the body skeleton. And in this case, we don't have a face, so no face. And for the skeleton, I'm gonna go ahead and choose human IK. That seems to be the most used one. And what you can do then is select the FPS, which you know you can set yourself. We'll, we'll go with 24. And you can choose where to actually export this. So I'm gonna go ahead and set mine. There we go, I found my folder. And now what I can do is export clips. And there we go, that's done. You can open the folder and actually find the FBX file right there. All right, so now we're in Blender and we're gonna go ahead and go to import FBX and here's our file. Before you import, make sure that under armature, you have automatic bone orientation selected. If you don't have this selected, your bones are gonna come in sideways and they won't be oriented properly. So once you have this checked, go ahead and import and right away, there is our recording. That is pretty dang cool. That's awesome. Now for my honest opinion on the suit after trying it out and if I think it's worth the price. I like the fit of the suit. I've put on some COVID pounds and had to go up a size so I was a bit worried the suit might be too tall or not fit correctly but it actually fit great. In terms of accuracy of motion capture I can definitely see a lot of improvements since the previous version and a lot less interference which is awesome to see but in terms of software i actually ran into a couple of bugs during the recording of the video in the beta version of the studio and so because of that and i was actually warned about this i highly suggest using the legacy version of the studio for now until the beta is not a beta anymore the biggest downside of the legacy version is that it does not support elevation tracking so there's that to think about overall if you're planning on working on a big project where you need to have a ton of character animation I think this suit is definitely worth it. I can't imagine working on a large scale project and having to hand animate everything myself. So if you have a small team of animators or you only have one animator, I recommend buying the suit, but only if you can afford the price. So again, in the next video, we'll be editing the motion capture and then exporting it. Then we'll be applying this animation to an animation rig. So for example, we'll be using our max rig which is from our animation course and our Blender Basics course. Speaking of which, if you're an animator who's interested in learning Blender and learning Blender's animation tools, we spent a ton of time and created a comprehensive course to get you up and running in Blender within two weeks of dedicated learning. So you can check our Blender Basics course in the description. All right, so before we end this video, 
Again, remember that there's a 10% off coupon code, so make sure to use it before it expires. I'll have that in the description. Thank you for watching, happy animating, and I'll see you in the next video.